Uh, this is an on-the-job chainsaw review. And I've done this before. It's kind of like a look at some of the cheaper, more affordable. You might even call them like burner chainsaws. This is the Proyama PCX68. There it is. Now I previously did a video, like a climbing video, about this little Neotech climbing saw, which gave me fits until I finally tuned the saw, played with it a little bit. It's been running better. And the deal is that I bought this small Proyama climber to test it out when I got this Neotech saw. I was like, I wanna try this little climbing saw. I bought this one, and then because of that, these dudes sent me this one. So it's technically a sponsored review. They sent me the saw for free, but there's like no kickback or anything, and, and I'm not like obligated to say good things about the saw. Sylvie. This is our barn cat. They told us he was feral and would probably never be around people. I feel like every chainsaw review I see these days, somebody comes out to their wood pile with a couple of saws and compares how fast they cut. Now how fast a saw cuts matters. I'm gonna say it's like insignificant, but that's just not what really matters to me the most when I get a saw. Like I care about the power, but the power of the saw is always like a factor that works in relationship to all the other like features of the saw, the ability to maintain it, keep it running, use it, everything. So it's not about just cutting wood at the wood pile and talking about the saw. I'm gonna take this guy on the job. We kind of got a little bit of a doozy today. Uh, dropping a dead tree and climbing another. And the situation, the situation is kind of unique. Uh, just a few specs on the saw. It is like 68 cc's, kind of like on the bigger side. Not like a honking saw, but it's on the bigger side. And I did put a link down below. If you buy the saw, I will get like 0 .000321 cents from Amazon. Okay, job is this property right here. All right, climber part of the job. That'll be the small saw. This tree just kind of dropped a limb. All right, this is the mini Proyama on the first little climber. Got my sights on that ash tree right there. It um, wants to go down on the structures, the house over there, clothesline, you know, all that stuff. It got like a camp down in there. It wants to go that way, so let's see if I can't sort of tie it up. Most of this tree is compromised, but I missed it. Oh, missed it again. Oh. No. Enter the dragon. They did send this to me with a couple of bars. It's got the 24 incher on here and it's 3 8 pitch 058. So kind of like that Husqvarna uh, size. Team might be a little tight.
There it is. Now after that first job in the hauler with the Proyama saws, taking down that ash tree and just doing some work, I took the saw on a sequence of other jobs just to see how it would perform. And I'll just show you some footage from this front yard dead ash removal job. It was a eight tree job. I posted a bigger video about the tree job and it involved a bunch of groundwork. So after cutting the tops out of the trees, all the spars needed to be dropped in the yard. I used the saw for that. I also used it to chunk up the logs into some reasonable or sort of reasonable sized pieces, you know, stuff I could move, move around. And with the sharp chain on there, that thing just rips. I should say that I run typically two sort of larger ground saws. I run a steel uh, 500i, that's a fuel injected steel saw. And I run a 362, it's kind of like, like on the smaller side. I don't have a 462, which would sit right here in the box. 462 is kind of similar in terms of CCs of this Proyama 68cc saw, but I gotta say, this Proyama for me is a nice in-between saw. It pulls harder than the 362. I don't think it's quite up there with the 500i, but it will spit some chip, absolutely. So I used it on that job for cutting up all kinds of stuff. And I wanted to cut stumps with it. I wanted to cut logs with it. You know, just really get a feel for it. Before I made this video, I did not feel like I was gonna really hype this saw. You know, I thought I was gonna be like, oh, pros and cons, you know. It's got some strengths, it's got some weaknesses. But on the ground, cutting up these eight ash trees, doing all kinds of stuff I just do on a regular basis with my steel saws, I like the saw. It pulls hard, it starts easy. I went through four or five tanks of gas and it just seems like the saw is breaking in really good. All right, so I kind of said this at the beginning of the video, I don't feel like a chainsaw review video should just be about cutting wood. It's also gotta be about maintaining your saw, cleaning it, opening it up, so let's do that. All right, I'm just gonna go through the maintenance ritual I do with all my saws on a regular basis just to keep them humming. I'll open it up, clean it out, pull the air filter, blow that all out, kind of look at the guts and the innards of this saw. And in that sense, I think we will get into some pros and cons. I'm already kind of bugged with what's going on right here. All right, so the deal with this Proyama saw, and it's true with a bunch of these kind of cheapo burner, low budge saws, is that they don't use capture nuts on these guys. So as you unscrew these things, they fall off and there we go. They're just easy to lose. It's just a regular nut instead of a capture nut. It's not like it's gonna fall off in the field. I'm not saying that. It's just that pretty much all the big chainsaw manufacturers, Husqvarna, Echo, Steel, all those guys, this doesn't happen. Also, these are very small nuts. It's kind of weird. Usually you got small nuts on your climbing saw and big nuts on your ground saw, but these are small. Now typically the first thing I would do is just blow this out with my air compressor, but I kind of want to look at everything to see where stuff's building up. I'm not seeing anything weird. The oiler was definitely running pretty good. The oiler kind of runs through right here. And this is a little bit, I don't know, it's just a rubber guard. I feel like it's like one of those short term things that's not going to last forever. And if it doesn't, I don't know how I would replace it. It's not like I can go down to my Proyama dealer. Uh, this is just the brake up here. That all looks good. Now in terms of the chains, it's not like it's hard to get. It's a 3 8 uh, pitch chain. And like I said, these guys give you like a 24 inch bar and an 18 inch bar. This chainsaw was pretty happy with the 24 inch bar. It would be even happier running an 18. The bar's got a little wear on it just from the last couple days, but it's not mushing me out or anything like that. Now it runs a 3 8 pitch chain. So that's basically the distance between three of your pins divided by two. That's really standard. Now this is the gauge 058. It should say 0.058, but if you run your gauge tool down there, yeah, that feels about right. 050 is just like a little bit sloppy. 058 is right. So getting changed shouldn't be a problem, but what if you want to replace your bar you're not gonna do it with the steel bar. 
You guys probably know better than I do if this is like a Husqvarna back end. If it is, you can put a Husky bar on here. If not, you're looking for a Proyama bar. And I don't even know where you're looking. Probably on Amazon. I'm kind of hoping someone hits a comment down below saying a Husky bar uh, tail end, back end looks like this. All right, digging just a little bit further into the saw, it's got some kind of like, I'm just gonna say like ergonomic issues. Like number one, right now I'm unscrewing the screw on the air filter and I'm doing it forever. Like they put like a two inch screw on this thing. All right, I'm finally off. Again, I would typically blow this all out like right away, but let's just see what's going on in here. It's definitely got some dust inside. That's kind of normal. It's got a small air filter and the air filter, instead of popping off, you got to unscrew another like interminable screw. But I'm kind of thinking the air filters on the small side. Look at this little thing. It's just like a little dinky air filter. Again, I would typically just blow it out, but what I want to see is if there's sawdust inside the filter. And there is. There's some oil and a little bit of sawdust on the inside of the filter. So you don't really want that. You want the air filter to capture everything. I mean, it's doing the job. You can see a bunch of dust, sawdust and chip and stuff on the filter, on this little mini filter. But you can also see a little bit in there which means, I think, at least what I think that means is that you're getting a little bit in your cylinder. Maybe your Proyama cylinder is hardcore and can handle it. Yeah, you can see this is the mouth of the carb and in there is just a little bit of dust. You really kind of don't want that. So if you're gonna get one of these saws, you probably wanna mod the air filter, make it better, because you're getting some buildup in there right on the choke door. There's like a little bit of crud on that thing, so. I don't really like that. That's not what I look for in a chainsaw. It kind of bums me out because running this thing is fun. It's really great. Maybe screwing this down all the way, like really cranking it down will help. I'll blow this out and clean it. And after a few more tanks of gas, I'll take a look and see how it is. Uh, on those ergonomic issues, one of the weird things, this is your kill switch. It's just, it's like you're flipping on a light in a boat in 1955. I've had some echo saws with that switch, some of my older echo saws. I'm just not crazy about it. It works, it's a fine toggle switch, but it's just kind of bogus. Also, this is the choke. It's got this plastic stem that I'm always worried about breaking. It works fine. Your pump bubble works fine also, but you know, it's just one of those stems, kind of like on a pool on pro, just a little bit of a bummer. Another small little thing. I've only run like I said, like five tanks of gas through this thing and the plastic's getting a little bit cooked. It's kind of a good thing on the sense that you've got almost no muffler, but because your output is kind of coming this way, it's kind of cooking the brake and the plastic. We just have to see long term how that stuff lasts. The gas port's fine. The oil port around here, it's small. It's a little bit raggedy, like the plastic's a little bit raggedy. And did I say it's small? It's small. Like you gotta really hit your pour to get it in there. It just doesn't make sense to me that you wouldn't put a slightly bigger port for the oil since you're gonna be dumping oil in this thing constantly. I just dumped gas all over everything. So the verdict on the saw is pretty simple. I really like running it. I'm a little concerned about the longevity given the air filter letting stuff pass through. And the ergonomics, you know, if you're a little bit grouchy, they might piss you off. The obvious thing to say is that it's kind of a saw for the cheapskate. If you've got the dough, you're probably gonna buy a really good steel chainsaw. It's gonna last you forever or long enough. Maybe you're gonna buy a Husqvarna. You know, you're gonna throw down some cash for a really good saw. But it kind of brings up the question of if these discount tools made in China, like a lot of non-discount stuff, if they're kind of like closing the gap. Like when I was running that saw, I was thinking about this wrench, which is total off-brand. Like I got this thing, I don't even know who makes it. It's like SH Tools or something like that. It's an off-brand wrench, but dang it, if this isn't the wrench I go to all the time, like there are some off-brand tools that I think are pretty decent. At the same time, I'm sure you've got some stuff that does not perform, like some cheap stuff that you just want to get rid of. Running that saw on the job and really liking it just makes me wonder like why they didn't attend to some of the small details, like a better, bigger air filter, some capture nuts, 
bigger oil port, just like some of the small stuff. Why not attend to that stuff and make a really dynamite chainsaw? Instead, you know, it's a little bit fiddly. All right, that's my on the job review. Thanks for checking it out.